Hey YouTube family, thank you for joining us today. I'm Matt. And I'm Randy. And you just joined us for Sunday morning service on the YouTube channel. We just thank you for joining us so much today. We're going to talk about grace, mercy, and peace. <laughs> Hang in there, because hope is on the way. In today's society, there's so much turmoil going on and so much craziness that it's nice to know that we have grace, mercy, and peace available to us. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below, and join us now for Sunday morning service. Hang on when life has got you on the edge and you feel like you just can't hang on anymore. Because there is grace, mercy, and peace on the way. Amen. And that will change things. We are in the second book of Timothy. Last week, we covered 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 1. Today, we're going to cover verse number 2. So if you think that we spent a long time in Acts, we might spend a little bit of time in Timothy. But this verse says this. This is 2 Timothy, a book written by Paul, to Timothy. And this is the second verse. It says to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Jesus our Lord. Amen. Grace. Do you need grace? Do you need mercy? Yes. Do, <laughs> do you need peace? Yes. Do you need peace? Well, these things, there's so much in there. You could probably preach a whole message or a whole series just on grace. Mm -hmm. You could probably do the same thing on mercy. Mm -hmm. And definitely on peace. Mm -hmm. Our world is looking for peace. Our world needs peace. Let's take a look first at grace. What is grace? Now, people take grace and they use a G-R-A-C-E as, as an acronym to say God's riches at Christ's expense. That uh, you, get, you get God's riches because Jesus paid for it. Grace in Christianity is the free and unmerited favor of God as manifested in the salvation of sinners and the bestowing of blessings. I want to break that down just a little bit for us. Grace is the fact that salvation has come into your life. And because of that salvation and because of that relationship that, that you can have with Jesus, there are blessings that come into your life. Do you understand? We, we can choose to, to live our life as blessed, or we can choose our life miserable. I know some people, I know some Christians, they 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 look like they done stepped in some sulfur mud. I don't know if you know what sulfur mud is, but it smells like sulfur. It smells like rotten eggs. And in Florida, we have these things called salt marshes and tidal creeks. Now, a, a salt marsh has places where these little six-foot-wide creeks wind through the salt marsh grass, and in, in there, when it goes out, the water goes out, it leaves the mud, and the water comes back in. When you step off into one of those little tidal, tidal creeks, whether you're looking for critters or fishing, you might step off into that. That mud lets you know that you, you have stepped into that sulfur mud, and that sulfur mud has a real strong odor. Now, some people in our Christianity look like they done stepped into that mud and the expression on their face is like, ugh. I like the way that one person said that they look like they got baptized in bad vinegar. <laughs> our Christianity is built because we have blessings. We have blessings on the, of the Lord. There are blessings that come on us because Amen. of the relationship that we have. Amen. How many people would like to be a child or an heir of a billionaire? Amen. Say, uh, uh, wouldn't you? Well, oh, I know your daddy. He's rich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Now, not not some of those ones saying, "Well, I'm a billionaire, and you're just going to have to cut your own stuff because you know." No, it's 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 a blessing. And when we're, we're we realize that we are children of God, right. and that we have grace in our life, right. that that we have blessings that are, are there for our lives. Now, does that mean that our Christianity that it, that we are going to spend our Christianity walking through this life like smelling the roses all the time? That everything's going to be ice cream. It's National Ice Cream Day, by the way, today. <laughs> today is National Ice Cream Day, so make sure that you find a place to get some ice cream. Our Christianity is not constant ice cream or cookies yeah. or cake. Sometimes, sometimes our Christianity may be a little bit of trials and a little bit of hard times. But that's where grace comes in. Grace. For by grace you have been saved, saved through faith. faith. And it is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God. Not a result of works, so that no one can boast. The, the grace thing, that, that we're saved by grace. We are saved not by works. It's not something that we did. You can't add to your salvation. When people come along and they say, well... You see, Jesus died on the cross, but that's just to give you an extra knock, an opportunity. That's just to give you a second chance. You still got to go knocking on doors. You still got to go to church every single Sunday. You still have to get involved in, in singing in the choir. You still have to give to the church all the time. You still have to go bring food down to the food pantry. That's like saying that Jesus died on the cross, but it just wasn't enough to pay for your sins. Right. What do you mean? Jesus' Jesus, Jesus's death on the cross was not enough? Are you some kind of super sinner? <laughs> you know? Sin is sin. And Jesus died on the cross to give us eternal life yeah. so that we might have a relationship with him. That's grace. Yeah. says this is grace, is that you are getting something you probably don't deserve. Think, think about that. Do you deserve eternal life? Have you lived your life good enough? Have you never told a lie? Have you never looked with lust? Have you never taken something that wasn't yours? Have you never taken the name of the Lord in vain? Have you ever been disrespectful? Ever been disrespectful for your parent to your parents? Ever? Ever? You know? I'm sure you've honored your mother and father in everything that you have done. You, grace is that you are getting something you probably don't deserve. The opposite of that is as opposed to getting what you do deserve. Think about that. Think about grace. Grace, G-R-A-C-E, still like God's riches at Christ's expense. Why do we need grace? Because we can't live without it. If there was no grace and judgment came instantly, we would die the first time we sinned. Do you, do you understand that? If there was not grace, if there was not grace, we would die. Judgment would come. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we have grace because, because God loves us. Amen. God loves us more than we could ever, ever, ever understand. I love my boys. I love my grandkids. Now, they may not always do things that I like. <laughs> Stephen, I love him. He's my our younger son. But I'm telling you, as a teenager, when he started getting sassy or disrespectful to to, to Randy, there were times I wanted to reach out and grab him by the neck and, and, and wring his neck. I was just like, you're being disrespectful to your mom. I'm, ooh, you're making me mad. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's teenagers when they, when they do that. But does that mean I didn't love him? No. no I, still, I still had love for him. And God has love for us. And it's by his grace that he still blesses us. Even though he don't really deserve the blessings that he he gives us breath, every breath that you breathe, 
God has given you. The air, the promises, the love, the kindness, the assurance, the courage God gives you. And we should say, thank you. How do we get grace? Well, this is real simple. This is found in James. James 4, 6 says, but he gives more grace. How do you get it? Somebody is giving it. Giving you grace. And it's God. But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Amen. God opposes the proud. You know what the proud say? The proud say, I thank God I'm not like that person. Yeah. That person is lower than me. They don't drive a BMW or a Mercedes Benz. They don't dress like I dress. Sometimes God has things that happen to us to keep us humble. I would rather be humble. Yeah. But I don't want to brag about humility. <laughs> well, I'm the most humble person that you will ever meet. Do you remember that? Yeah. I, do. I don't. You, no, I'm talking. Oh, oh, I'm talking down St. Cloud Church. Yeah. I don't mean to be braggadocious, but uh, it's like braggadocious or braggadocious. What was it? What, whatever. And it's always a testimony of, of how God has just blessed them. Blessed, blessed. I'm so blessed. Everything's going blessed. Well, everything's going good. It's easy to talk about being blessed, but sometimes things are not going good. And then we need to understand that it doesn't matter what happens here. In reality, as long as our relationship is right with God when we die, ain't none of this going to matter no more. Amen. It doesn't going to matter. When we die and we go to heaven, it doesn't matter what kind of car I drive. It doesn't matter even whether my deodorant was working right or not. It doesn't matter whether I was rich or poor. It doesn't matter whether I had a big house or no house. It doesn't matter whether I was a dog dog lover or a cat lover. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter if I had chickens that didn't ever lay eggs. It doesn't matter. It's God, and it's the relationship with yeah. him. It's yeah. his grace and his mercy. Well, how about segueing right into mercy? What is mercy? Mercy is not getting what you really deserve. We talked about grace, you getting something you don't deserve, but mercy, on the other hand, is not getting what you really deserve. Without mercy, yeah, you would be dead. Yeah. Do you know that the the priests, they weren't allowed into where the Ark of the Covenant was? You know, yeah. Raiders of the Lost Ark, anybody seen that movie, Raiders with the Harrison Ford? You know, yeah. da, 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 da. Yeah. They, they weren't allowed to go in there. People weren't even allowed to touch it. There was They were carrying it one time, and a guy... It started to fall, and the guy reached out to try to stop the ark from falling, and he died. Because he, some some people say, well, that's because it was really an electrical conductor, and if you touched it, uh, it would shock you and you would die. Well, then how come the how come the Levites could touch it? But they had to be right with God. So they had to go in and they give sacrifices. You can read about this. Don't take my word for it. Read read the Bible. They would tie like a rope to the priest's arms. Or the priest's ankles, so that he could go in and he could do the things that he needs to do by the Ark of the Covenant. And they had little bells on the rope, so they can hear if the priest was moving around. Because when the bells stopped ringing, they knew that that priest had died because he was hiding something in his heart. And then they could take that rope and they could pull it out. Hallelujah. Now you say, "Well, that's kind of crazy." That's in the Bible. See, God makes provisions for the craziest, craziest stuff. Mercy. This is what Spurgeon said. And I do like Charles Spurgeon because he preached how many years ago? About 160, 140, 160. When you listen to sermons from him that are that, that, that were written down from 160 years ago, you would think that this guy's living in today's society by the things that he preached. And this is what he said. God's mercy is so great that you may you may sooner drain the sea of its water or deprive the sun of its light or make space too narrow than diminish the great mercy of God. Go. That's how much mercy God has. 
God is a merciful God. Yeah. He is not a God up there with a lightning bolt waiting to strike you down the first time that you make a mistake. When I first asked Jesus into my heart, uh -huh. and I went to the front of the church and I asked Jesus into my life, I didn't walk out of that church service a saint. I walked out of that church service like, like somebody who had taken their first step in the right direction. Uh -huh. But through the grace and the mercy of God, God came down and he worked in our life and he worked in our marriage. Yeah. And he brought change in our lives. Oh, it wasn't overnight. But I'm just so thankful that, that for all the people who opened their mouth and said, oh, this, you're, you're, this is just a phase that you're going through. We, we know. Because it seems like whoever's, whoever in school was the biggest into drugs, be, from, from my experience, they became the biggest Jesus freaks when they grew up. And I was one of those people. The, the thing that people didn't know is that when I was in high school, I wasn't even into drugs. I drank when I was in high school because my friends drank. But most of us, we didn't do any drugs, so I wasn't doing drugs. But my eyes seemed like they were red a lot of times just from allergies or whatever. And, and plus, I was goofy. I mean, you think I'm goofy now. I was goofy and off the hook before, and, and I couldn't shut up. I mean, I got in trouble most of the time in school just simply because I couldn't keep my mouth closed. I would think something was funny, and I just, I teach her trying to teach a lesson. I just, you think that trans, that finished when I became a Christian? <laughs> no. The pastor's wife used to say, Matt, you are a busy little farmer. <laughs> you are a busy little farmer. Because I would be planting seeds of disruption and interruption because it say something and, 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 and it would strike me as funny and I didn't know that you know you just don't let that let those funny comments fly. <laughs> Confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confession in this this picture here is a, like a confessional booth. Uh, under a Catholic church if, if you've ever if you've ever been to a Catholic church in the church, at least when I was when I was young, you would have the church, but off on the side were these little, like, doors, and the priest would sit behind behind a curtain, and you would go and you would sit down in this booth and you would say like, Father, forgive me for I have sinned, and you make and, and you could you could you basically would tell the tell the priest, you know what you had done wrong and it was supposed to be like in full confidence they weren't recording there wasn't anything going on and then he'd tell you to do something like you know okay well you need to say the, the our father prayer 20 times each morning and 10 times at night and, and, and three Hail Mary prayers and this is or you, he'd tell you what you need to do and then he'd absolve you of your sins we don't need that this says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. If you've got something in your life that's, that, is, that, that is a sin, you need to take it to Jesus. And you need to confess it as a sin. Don't try to make it not sin in your life. Too many people out there are trying to say, well, it's not sin. There's a difference between being weak and being wicked. Weakness is, I have sinned. Again. Just like I did yesterday. I have failed. I have failed the Lord. I have done something that I know that God does not want me to do, and I am sorry. I feel grief in my heart. I feel conviction when I do something wrong. I feel like, sometimes I open my mouth and I'm thinking like, you should have said that. Why do we need mercy? Because mercy chooses not to be offended and compassionately sees a hurting heart behind hurtful words. Yeah. Now, why do we need mercy? Because it seems like people do things that offend us. Yeah. People say things that offend us. Yeah. And we need to have mercy. Christ's mercy is reflected in the cross of Christ. A direct reflection of his love for us. Mercy is an extension of and an expression of love. love. An act of kindness Passion or favor. Why do we need mercy? 
because there's a world out there that needs mercy. Yeah. There's people that we work with that need mercy. There's people yeah. we drive around that, that, that we drive with on the highway that, that need mercy. There, there's people that we have in our house that need mercy. There are neighbors that we have that need mercy. And whose responsibility is it to show them mercy? The ones who have been shown mercy. Yeah. It's us. Yeah. You say, well, I don't like the way that person acts. He ought to act like a Christian. Well, you can't get the Christians to act like Christians. How do you expect the people who aren't Christians supposed to act? They don't, they don't have a relationship with Jesus. No. They don't believe his word. They don't want nothing to do with God. And you expect them to live a righteous life? Well, we ought to make them. We ought to make laws that say, you know, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt go to church every Sunday. Thou shalt give in the offering. Thou, thou shalt not get divorced. You know, the, these things, we, we, should, we should make laws. We should force it on. Well, then you are no longer a free moral agent. You know, it's pretty simple. God said, here's blessings. Here's cursings. Let's change that a little bit. Here's happiness. And here's sorrow. If you ask my son into your life and you accept that he died on the cross to pay for your sins, you will have happiness. But if you reject it, you will have sorrow. You'll have nowhere to turn. Amen. We need the grace and we need God's mercy. Yeah. How do we get mercy? Well, we we, we found out how, how to get grace. Uh -huh. God gives it. This is what Jesus said. Jesus said God gives mercy willingly. He wants us to do the same. Jesus said, blessed are the merciful, merciful for they will be shown mercy. Mercy. How do you get mercy? Merciful. You be merciful. Amen. You be merciful to people. Yeah. Later on, Jesus told the religious leader to go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. God's more interested in you being merciful to people. Yeah. Um, less mis le less miserables. I can't even say that word. Is anybody familiar with that? The, the less l e s yeah. miserables, miserables, or whatever. It's like a like a Broadway thing. But there, there was a, there, there's a story of, of a guy who went to jail for, steal, for supposedly stealing bread, and he spent a lot of time, and he came out, and he was not welcome, and he ended up at the church in the parsonage, and the pastor of the church, or the priest, or the rabbi, whatever, but he was a priest, uh, said, come on in, and we're going to give you something to eat, we're going to give you rest for your soul, and in the middle of the night... He went and he sold the silver from the, 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 like the silverware, you know, like forks and spoons and whatever, and he stole them and left in the middle of the night, and the cops, the police officers caught him and brought him back after beating him and brought him back to the, 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 the minister and said, this guy says that you gave him, and the minister said, yes, but he forgot the candlesticks. Why did you forget the candlesticks? And he said, I am I, I, I want you to take this. And after they let him loose, he said, this is what I want you to do. This is how much those candlesticks are worth that you forgot to take. I want you to take this and I want you to use the money to make yourself an honest man. I am ransoming your soul. And that He bought us. Yeah. We were taken hostage by sin. Yeah. We were taken hostage by sin. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, I will pay the ransom. What's the ransom? Well, the hostage had committed sin and was worthy of death. Jesus said, I'll die in this place. Peace 
Last one, because we're at 1134. I am out of time. And Randy wouldn't let me start 10 minutes early. Peace. Remember, he said, grace, mercy, and peace. This is this is the MJV, the Matthew James version of what I what I consider peace. Peace is complete rest and confidence that it'll be okay. That's what peace is to me. It's complete rest. Doesn't mean that there's not going to be a storm. You can you can do. We have a lot of lightning. How many people noticed all the crazy lightning that we had just the other day? The, the storm came through, and there was a it was Thursday, Thursday afternoon. There was a lot of lightning in that storm, and wind and rain. And, and I, I sat and I opened up the windows so that I could watch the lightning, because I felt safe in my house. I was hoping it didn't like strike the window in front of me and reach through, and I just didn't know like zap me. But I, I felt I, I felt safe. Doesn't mean there wasn't a storm. It's just that I have confidence that it's going to be okay. Yeah. That's peace. Why do we need peace? Well, who doesn't? Yeah. Who doesn't need peace? A lack of peace brings worry and stress. That results, this results in poor health and long-term misery. Yeah. I want you to think about what stress does in people's lives. Stress, stress is unhealthy for you. Physically, stress causes grief and, and sorrow, bitterness, and that rots your bones. Literally, it can it can, it can make you your your stress level can give you high blood pressure, and when you get high blood pressure, you can you can die because because you're all stressed out on stuff. You become you become all worried. Most people get to this state. I see this so often in people's lives that they get so stressed out over something. And sometimes it's silly things. I got stressed out at work the, 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 a couple months ago because I dropped a washer inside an engine cowl. And it was an aluminum washer, like 50 cents. Well, I can't just stick a magnet down there. The, thing, the washer was made out of aluminum. And, and, and so I'm like, how am I going to get that out of there? Because I need this. I only bought one washer. I'd have just left it in there if I'd have had two. But this was a special washer. So I'm getting frustrated because no matter what I'm doing, I can't find that washer. I know exactly where, where it slipped down into there. I have no way to get it out. I'm trying to reach in there with little hooker things. I'm trying to reach in there. I can't get a magnet. I'm trying to hit it with an air compressor. And, and, and I'm faced with having to pull this motor apart to get to a little teeny washer. To fix something. And I'm thinking, like, those stupid people. Who designed this thing? Who stuck this cover on this motor that you have to take off 15 other covers just to get to the cover? Where who stuck this thing down inside there to begin with? That you can't even get to it without taking and I and I started concentrating on that. Well, pretty soon it was getting aggravated. And I began to get aggravated, and I could tell it probably was making my blood pressure going up. And I was visibly like, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Stupid Toro people. I don't know who t Toro people. You know, I don't know who designed this thing, but boy, I sure could. Yeah, I can fix it. Give me a match and some gasoline. I'll fix this machine. Well, my boss is like, it's, it's all right. It's all right. Just walk away for a little while. Because sometimes I have to do that. Sometimes I just have to walk away. You know, that's unhealthy. Yeah. To allow yourself to get that. I sh I could have said. I'm gonna pray over it. I'm gonna I'm gonna lay hands on this piece of Toro equipment, and I'm gonna pray, God, in the name of Jesus, help me to get that 50 cent washer out of there. And you know that that would have fixed the situation, and I didn't have to allow myself to get all stressed out. I've done it with the Jeep. I have prayed over a part on a Jeep trying to fix it. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Lord, in the name of Jesus, fix that AC that's making dripping noises on our ceiling. Um, and God has come in and helped me within, within minutes to see a solution that I had not seen. 
to get that aluminum washer out of there without taking the whole motor out. No matter what your situation is, when you turn that over to God, He will give you peace. Yeah. How do we get peace? Well, this is real simple. How do we get peace? It comes from Jesus. Yeah. It's that simple. All you got to do is ask for it. Amen. In 1 John 5.13, it says this. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Yes. You believe on Jesus. Yes. That you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Yes. And now listen to this. Verse 14 says this. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, according to his will, yeah. that he will hear us. And we can know that he hears us. Yeah. Whatsoever we ask, we know that we will then have the petition that we desire of him. Amen. God said, find it in my will, ask for it, I'll hear you, and you can be confident that you're going to get what you're asking for. Because it's in God's will. Amen. Because it's in his word. Yes. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, but my peace that passes all understanding. Yes. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you give us your peace. Yes, we agree. It's in his will. Amen. I can know that he hears us. It all comes down to Jesus. Amen. It all comes down to Jesus. Your grace, your mercy, and your peace are all wrapped up in Jesus. With, with closing statement, I just want to say, know Jesus, N-O, and know Jesus, no peace. N-O, Jesus, N-O, peace. K-N-O, know Jesus, and you're going to know peace. Amen. It is because of what he has done. Yeah. And the peace, you will never have peace if you don't have Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen. You will never have peace because haunting you is always the thought, is what's going to happen to me after I die? When you know what Jesus did, and you know who he was, and you know why he did it, and you know that you have asked him into your life, then you don't have to wonder about that question because you know that the day that you die, that you're going to step on off into yeah. eternity to be with Jesus in heaven. Yeah. you got to know. you got to know it in your knower. Yeah. You understand? You know it in your knower. That you know, that yes. you cannot be persuaded otherwise. I am persuaded that yes. Jesus Christ died on the cross yeah. to pay for all of my sins. He washed me. He cleansed me in the blood. He yeah. has given me a new life, caused me to be born again, filled me with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. And he has blessed me in ways that I cannot describe because of what he did. Yes. Not because of me, but because of him. And I publicly profess that. Yes. And that is the key. You want grace, mercy, and peace? You need to have Jesus in your heart. Amen. You need to have Jesus in your heart. No Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, and you will know peace. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day that you've given us. Father, I don't know who all's listening today. I don't know who's online and who's... Who's not online? I don't know who's listening to this right now. I don't know who's going to be listening to this in the future. But I know, Lord, that you have given us more grace and more mercy than we have ever, ever, ever deserved. So, Lord, today I pray that people would come to a knowing understanding of who you were and who you are and what you can do for us. Amen. Lord, it's not about us. It's about you. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us to understand that you have brought us forgiveness. You have brought us mercy. You have given us grace. Hallelujah. Lord, forgive us for the things that we have done wrong. 
Father, if there's anyone who has never asked Jesus into their life, I pray that right now, someone has prayed that prayer. I hope that someone has rededicated their life to the Lord. It's about Jesus. It does not. Again, it does not mean that it is an end of all your troubles. It just, that, it just means that when the end comes, then it's, you're definitely going to have an end to all your troubles. Yeah. Because you'll be all stepping into a place where I has never seen ears have never heard no one's in it ever been able to even remotely think or imagine yeah. how heaven is going to be Amen. and let me tell you for you skeptics out there you say you're 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 fruitcake you're nutty well you know what even if i'm wrong even if jesus was wrong even if the bible isn't true and maybe you and your science are correct. Well, let me tell you what. Then we just die. <laughs> a worm eats me in my casket or whatever, or I'm cremated. And I'm not going to know. Uh -huh. But if the Bible is right, and Jesus was right, yeah. and Christianity is right, in a heap of trouble. <laughs> then you and your science are in a heap of trouble. <laughs> so ask Jesus into your life and yeah. give him a chance. Amen. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. For those that are watching, there is an offering box over here, and there is an offering link down at the bottom of the page. Click the like button right there. We appreciate y'all joining us. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock for a morning devotion. And I'll have Randy come up here. She asked me. She, she just got this shirt, and she said, she said, do you like this shirt? And she was standing in front of like the open window. And so it was kind of like, a, kind of dark. And I, I hesitated for a second. But when she stepped in the light, it's like, yeah, I do like that shirt. It's pretty. It's yeah. colorful. It's got a lot of yeah. colors to be able to match you. No matter what shirt you're wearing. Yeah, no matter what. See, you see her, her, her voice stuff. And, yeah, kinda, kinda it gives a lot of options. We try, we try to match. We try to match. Yeah, so somebody somebody told me yesterday, yesterday or the day before yesterday, they said I love to watch your guys' videos because it looks like you guys are hunting on a honeymoon or something. And it's like we're going to be married. How many years we've been married? Thirty nine years. Next June, forty years. I said, yeah, we're still on our honeymoon, and it's because of Jesus.